Welcome to Off the Coast, where we examine the views from Vancouver Island with your host, Rosemary Barnes. New and exciting things, preserved and respected things, business, recreation, politics, travel, all from the point of view of the people living and working on the island. Rosemary is a professional speaker and certified speaking coach living in historic Ladysmith and loving every day of the island life. Here is your Vancouver Island host, Rosemary. Welcome to Off the Coast, views from Vancouver Island. Albeit a few minutes late today, we've decided to do island time today. My fabulous guest today is the inimitable Tasia Taylor. Tasia is a former stewardess, not flight attendant, and she's going to tell us what that means, a former stewardess, a model of over 30 years, and a runway confidence coach teaching women the walk the look, and how to own the room. On a whim, Tasia found herself in a for-sale stunning beach house on Departure Bay in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. She set sail from West Vancouver, bought the house, and is now the vacation rental owner and operator of Randall House on the sea, at the sea. We'll clear that up in a minute. It's also known as Departure Bay Beach B&B and Suites. Now, I had the absolute thrill of getting a tour of this particular facility, and oh my goodness, it's like royalty in there. Tasia, welcome to the show. Hi, Rosemary. Um, thank you Hi. for having me as a guest. And by the it's, way, I love the name Off the Coast. It, well, I love the name Randall Suites. Is it on the sea or at the sea? It's Randall House by the sea. Randall, okay, there you go. Third time's a charm. So, <laughs> so we're going to get into the, the, the Randall House by the Sea in a minute. But first, I would love you to tell me, please, what is the difference? Because you were very specific when you told me that you were a stewardess, not a flight attendant. Can you please tell me what the difference is? Oh, yeah, it was a big difference. It, because it was fairly new, I think nurses at the time were the stewardesses. And then they opened that up to everyone. And, of course, women who wanted to extend them, themselves further in life and have more freedom jumped on the bag, bandwagon to become a, a stewardess. And I think, I don't know, I was one out of 500 and something. Very fortunate. Um, a stewardess is... <laughs> <laughs> is interesting. They had the best time ever. Um, we also dressed up. Even the passengers dressed up. They wore nice suits, purses, um, high heels. The ladies, I remember getting on a flight uh, when I wasn't even a stewardess like that. But we had the, um, oh, what do I say? We had the trolleys and we had the cocktail drinks. We had the fine china um, and we had a lot of fun. And I myself had four different wigs. I, had, I was blonde Wig. one day, wigs. <laughs> I was blonde one day, brunette, black, or uh, red head. And we'd carry these in our little flight bags. And, and we one us did it for fun. Do you want a really I, fast, funny story? I can remember when, when the very first time I got on an airplane, it was still at the time when you actually got dressed up to get on an airplane. And it wasn't just like getting on a big bus. Like it is now. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was fun, and everyone got fed so well. And um, everyone everyone in economy at that time, you would consider a first class passenger now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So so you were actually serving cocktails and fine fine dining and making sure people were comfortable and and not just responding to a light. Oh, they had everything. They had newspapers, choice of magazines. Um, yeah, and, and, and even deadheading was fun because we got to sit in first class and, you know, it was beautiful flying at night in the clouds. I, I have great love for um, jets and being a stewardess. And my heart sings every time a jet flies close to me. So here at Randall, sorry, Randall House um, by the sea, we have the little seaplanes flying over and they still amaze me. Ah. <laughs> uh. Uh, and so how long did you do that? Well, I, I didn't do that long. What happened is I met my husband. <laughs> and uh, I was he a pilot? A <laughs> I couldn't get a transfer to Vancouver. I was flying out of Winnipeg. 
and um, and then my husband, me, he wanted to get married, and I wanted to do that too. So I let it go, and then I found out three months later my transfer would have gone through, but I would never have known that. But I moved on from there. It was time to do other things, and that's when I became a model shortly after that. Okay, now this you can't accidentally become a model, so <laughs> you must have pursued it in some way, or how? Oh, okay, first of all, how tall are you? Because t- models are supposed to be terribly tall. Yes, tall? Nowadays, nowadays they're 5'11", 5'10", 5'11". Um, I was 5'9", at the time, and that was totally acceptable. Okay. Mm-hmm. So tell me the story. How did you... All right, and let's just relish in the story of, of being discovered. How did you become a model? Oh, dear, do I really have to tell this story? <laughs> No, you don't. I'm I just, was, I, was, I, I would just I, I, love to hear it. I was, I was a lover of dancing. I loved to dance. So I was in the sixties and I became a go-go dancer. I had all the dancer. products. I had the, I had the white boots, the costume and a ton of hair that I could swing around. And so <laughs> a radio station, uh, uh, I have to be careful about this. I get this right. Those trailers, radio stations have trailers and uh, they were promoting something, and they asked me if I would go-go dance in front of their radio station. Hey, look at here I am. How many years later, back at the radio station? Oh, <laughs> yeah, here you are, back home. Thought about that. So I was go-go dancing, and someone was taking photographs of me. And later on, it turned out that he was uh, he sold cameras at Hudson's Bay. And so he asked me if um, I would like to do some photography shots, and I said, sure. Anyway, long story short, about three days later, I got a call from the uh, photography no, the photography department asking me if I would come and shoot uh, some pictures for the newspaper. And then just shortly after that, I was walking around in the bay. I was young and quiet, <laughs> not like I am now. They used to call me the top, tall, silent one. And someone, t- someone saw me and... Um, asked if I'd be interested in doing a documentary called The Saskatchewan, because I am from Saskatoon. And oh. my mother checked it all out, and she thought that was okay. So I did a documentary out in the country for um, called The Saskatchewan, and then it gradually took off from there. Wow. Okay, so what did you have to do in this documentary? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> oh. I like to joke about this. You know, models don't talk, do they? Well, they didn't, no. <laughs> no, no, they don't. So um, basically we stood around um, fence posts and posed a bit. And, <laughs> and let me just get rid of the, uh, this thing here. Just a second. Uh, yeah, we posed a bit and walked uh, walked along in the wheat fields and there was a horse off in the field. But I think they were just trying to show a young girl from Saskatchewan that probably – lived on a farm, and I had the great pleasure and joy of spending my summers on my aunt and uncle's farm. So, that Oh, was. that's grand. So you were quite at home in the field. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And what, what did they have you wearing? It's a long time ago. I can't quite remember. And don't forget, I've worn thousands of outfits. But it wasn't oh, I'm sorry. Fur. That was a hard question, yes. It wasn't a Louis Furrow, but it would have been probably pants and jeans and, I don't know, something like that. So, so okay, but that's certainly not where your model career ended. No, um, I modeled across Canada. Probably the most interesting thing I did, well, in Vancouver, I did uh, 23 shows or 23 years of Madame Krause. She had um, Louis Ferro, the Louis Ferro line. And when you step into those clothes, it doesn't matter who you are. You feel like royalty. And also uh, for sure and things like that. But probably the most interesting thing I did in my modeling career, I happened to be in New York at the time, very short period of time, and they had changed the walk already way back in New York. Here in Vancouver, they were still walking very stiffly. So by then they had changed, and all of a sudden they were using their shoulders and coming forward and the hips were moving, and I loved it. And I watched this model, Billy Blair, do it over and over and over again. Then I came back to Vancouver, and I thought, well, I'd practice. So I was working in the Hotel Vancouver with the long hallways. And there I was. I was like Bambi on ice trying to figure out this hip and how does that happen? <laughs> so I take off from the former one. Anyway, and that, and that actually in the end became what I taught in my uh, red carpet walk workshops. I took 
taught the walk, the look, and how to own the room. And what I was teaching women was to be graceful and use this classic model's walk and get your hips going. There's a lot of story behind that workshop that many, many things I have in it that we couldn't cover today. But I, I wanted to have, I was, I wanted to give women confidence because I had, I grew up in a difficult childhood. So I had to make my way down the runway many times getting confidence. And so eventually I created this workshop, the red carpet walk for all women, all ages, all shapes, all sizes, because I said to myself, there are these supermodels out there and we're all looking at them on TV and red carpet. But I said, you can do it too. So I created a nine step program, went and bought a, a long red, 20 foot long red carpet. And I had women 10 on each side and music and made it fun and taught them each step by step by step how, how to do what I did. And, um, and, and we had so much fun. And I did eight, six years of those workshops in Vancouver. Wow. So you helped so many women simply gain some poise, understand body language a little bit, add a lot of charisma, yeah. and, and shine a little more. Well, my tagline at that time was, let that beautiful spirit shine. So what I was trying to do and help them evolve, and just they, we all have this beautiful spirit inside of us, and it's being clamped down for whatever reasons, because I had to go through that experience myself. So what I was helping them bring that spirit out, it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, what you do, you have this beautiful spirit inside. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, and you know, I don't know, are young people today being taught how to, how to uh, walk the walk and stand tall? And I mean, is there, it, it, there must still be models being produced. Well, the thing I always emphasize when someone came to my class, I said, I'm not trying to teach you how to be a model. You know, and, and that was really helpful because then more pe women came. You know, they, they came because they could relax a bit more. As a matter of fact, when I taught that class, before we started it, I had everyone put their hand on their heart and repeat after me, I love and accept myself just as I am. And that mm. gave them the freedom to just be. You know, you had to open that nice. door. And sometimes one woman just burst out crying right then and there because she never thought about loving herself. So anyway, um, there are tons of models out there. Of course, there are. I don't know who will pick up from where I left off. I was mentoring a, a young lady, um, and um, she, she did a few workshops with me, and she just loved it. She brought her friends. But I think someone could take this and run way far further with it than I did. But, you know, I was, I had a, it was just in me to do something. And what I wanted to do was give back to the world you, you know you work you do this at some point you need to be a mentor or giving back in some way whether it's charity or this or that i actually did a workshop in downtown east side vancouver for women challenged women you know or yeah, yeah. well you know and and we still have we still have the same problem today where our yeah. our young ladies um are are quivering behind uh very slender masks of confidence they really they really don't know who they are or yes, how to yeah. be, and 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 we've got uh, safety pin necklaces and and all manner of tattoos and embellishments, yeah. uh, as a way of expressing individuality. And there's nothing wrong with that, but are they confident? And there's the trick: is how do we instill <laughs> confidence? Right. Interesting question. I've pondered that many times myself. But I think that we all know now that the media is a big problem for, for young women today. You have to be this, you have to be that. I was fortunate. I grew up in a time very young, many years ago, when I wasn't in competition with anybody. I would not myself personally want to be a model today. Um, mm -hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I, I was able to bypass many things um, that today are out, out in media that are hard on, on young girls and women in general. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then maybe I shouldn't have said that, but I, I, I don't <laughs> necessarily like everything that's happening today for young yeah. people. It's difficult. It's a difficult time to be growing up. How did you end up then? So you, you were a, a stewardess having the time of your life. You got <laughs> married. Then you, you became a model. Mm -hmm. And then you, you began red carpet 
Red carpet yeah, walk. the red carpet walk, and, and I did that for the, the red past carpet six walk. years. Yeah. And, and, and Jen. Mm-hmm. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I remember doing my last workshop on May the 22nd, and we purchased this house in June of what the year is now. I've been here a year and a half now. so Okay, I hang on, because our... Our listeners don't know where here is. So, Mike, oh, you, you were sorry. in Vancouver, and now you are in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island. Yes, I lived in West Vancouver for 36 years, taught the workshops for the past six years, and then moved to Nanaimo, which I absolutely love. Okay, why did you move to Nanaimo? Well, it was a time to downsize, which we didn't do. We upsized. It was time to downsize. And we had been looking this at a few things for the past three years. And my husband loves to fish. And he's he's a facial plastic surgeon. And, and he was retiring now to just do uh, permanent injections. And I was coming over here and discovering this amazing house um, and that I could re- do a bed and breakfast again. And so, uh, I mean, we just... We walked through the arbor, and it was all pink flowers, every shade of pink. And I had a vision of Tasia's pink space, and I wanted it to be about nurturing. But I had no idea that I would have a bed and breakfast someday, and that's what I'm doing now, nurturing, right? So we fell in love with the house. We bought it. Uh, My husband's busy doing his thing, and I'm doing this. And It's been a huge learning curve um, uh, going from one thing to another, but... But I love cooking, and this house was actually built. And then I, I'm sorry, Randall House. It was originally Randall House, and now I've added by the seat. But it was mm-hmm. originally built as a bed and breakfast house, so everything in it has to do with a bed and breakfast. And when I was in Vancouver about 20, 25 years ago, there was a huge convention in Vancouver, and the hotels were filled, and um, so they were appealing to the locals. And I said, I'll do that. And I sent my husband and my son off to uh, to do a rites of passage. And so he took our son, Jay, all through Smoky Lake, Alberta, wherever he was that grew up. And I was serving these incredible breakfasts outside in my back patio. And then after the convention was over, someone heard about me and kept giving me referrals. So I did it for a whole summer. So anyway, when I... Yeah, when I walk through here, there are all those pink flowers. There's Tasia's pink space. And I have never been happier in my life. And just throw one other thing in there. I will pick up my fresh farm eggs only seven minutes away on my motorized bicycle. So I can (laughs) be in the farm in the city. In the farm in the city. So so it's a, 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 a community within a community within a community. Well, I've never had so much community as I have since I've come here. We are so busy. My husband joined Gyro because someone invited him. So we're out for dinner once a month. Um, and I joined and I'm a biz. And I met all these wonderful friends. Oh, and I want to mention my new friend, Don Hankins. I started Nanaimo Newbies. And I met Don like within days after. And I, I always wanted to have a partner, a business partner, a female one. And I, that never happened. And then I met um, Dawn, and she said, sure, I'll do that. So we got together, and we created Nanaimo, Nanaimo Newbies because we were new, and we wanted to um, – um, every two months we have an event. This one coming up on May the 27th, we're doing Tasia Shopping Convoy. That's another adventure I used to do from West Vancouver. I used to bring women over on the ferry, about five of us, in a car, and go I take them to Bamboozles, my very favorite place on the island, and now uh, House of Leaves. And we go shopping for an hour or two. Then we go to Cuckoo's for lunch, and we drive. I think I, my girlfriend had a place at the time. We went there, and then we drive back to the ferry, get on the ferry, and be home by seven o'clock. Shop till we dropped. Had a fabulous lunch. Uh, this is why I love Nanaimo, and I mention names like Cuckoo's. But what what I want to tell you is what happened once was so amazing about the community of Nanaimo. Is about November. I felt last year. I felt we need to do something. My husband, husband, and I. So what happened is um, outside of Nanaimo, only twenty minutes away is is the Cedar area. We booked a B and B on a farm for two nights only, half an hour away from where we live. And mm-hmm. I said to my husband, "You know what? We can start here, and eventually we'll make it to Victoria in two years." 
<laughs> and that was kind of funny because we, we are well traveled, but I, I just want to be here and I want to travel this island. So anyway, it, uh, yes, it's, it's a remarkable place. Why is it, do you think, because here on the island, we have lovely hotels, but bed and breakfasts are the place to stay when you come to Vancouver Island. Why do you think, I mean, not in all places, People don't go to, to Alberta. And, I mean, there are B&Bs there, but not like they are here. Why do you think there might be that difference? Well, I've never been asked that question, but, but for me, um, it's an island. It's away from the city. And I don't want to be in a city within a city. I mean, I don't want to be in a hotel when I come to the island because I know there are many wonderful bed and breakfast places and they're community wise, they're friendly, they're amazing. Like the one I'll just mention, Fred, 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 Fedex Farm we went to. And uh, it was around Christmas time, and there are 23 little little stops you make by car for the, for the Christmas uh, artisans, the local artisans. Yes. And yeah, it's amazing. So these things become part of it the bed and breakfast you're staying at. You know, we stayed two nights, right? Just two nights. And we also went mushroom foraging on that same two nights. We, we traveled around these 23 little um, artisan stores and bought little gifts for Christmas. And then and the next night we went back to Mali House and we were eating with 20 people that we had foraged mushrooms with about four different um, courses of mushrooms, <laughs> you know. So wow. I'm doing things here that I've never done in the city. And, and you know, the other thing is I can be in the country in 20 minutes. And where I lived, I could be in Park Royal in two minutes in a traffic jam. I love West Vancouver. I love Vancouver, but I really love it here. It's, it's an amazing place. Um, the, the newbies, I want to go back to that for a minute. Yes. Yeah. Um, so they meet at Randall House by the Sea every two months. Yeah, right? we're just setting it up right now. Because when I brought everybody over from West Van, uh, they met at my place, and then we took the ferry over. So we're meeting here um, because it's kind of easy. It's central. And then we take – we all leave together, and we drive to Bamboozle. And, uh, well, anyway, we do – I said that already. But um, that's our first meeting with Nanaimo newbies because I have learned things since I've come here in a year and a half, and I love to, new adventures – and Dawn is coming in with me now. She's only been here, I think, less than a month or so. And she's coming in, and we're learning together. Now, the next two months later, in June, we're going to have a picnic at my place. And you bring your bathing suit, and we hope it's sunny. And, um, you know, in my backyard, over, not my, I don't know if it's the front yard or the backyard when you're facing the ocean, but a picnic and swimming and music, and I'll make her appies and Prosecco. <laughs> And then two months later, we thought, okay, that would take us to September. We'll do a winery tour with these new people because it'll be new for us too. And then, oh, I don't know, it goes. And then eventually, probably Tainamera for a, a spa time. And we, and then just casual coffees in between. Just nothing really fancy. But hey, do you want to get together? Let's go for a little hot hike or a walk or a coffee. So, is this just for women? Yep. However, the one coming up in May, the, the shopping convoy, um, Don and I are talking about we women will all go and do this. And all those that want to bring their meet their, their husbands want to meet us after when we get back, then we'll have uh, everybody will all the women will drop off an hors d'oeuvre before we leave on our trip. And then I'll supply. Oh, I have a I have a house wine called something Tasia, whatever, Randall House. So I'll supply the um, the sparkling wine. From, you have a house wine. Yes. In and your to, bed and breakfast, you have your own house wine. Yes, and I must mention Fiona Berry. She has, um, oh, what's the name of her place? I, I met her early when I came here, and so I ordered some wine bottles and a label. And, yes. Um, yeah, so I've got a little stock here. But I don't sell it, but I include it in with things. Oh, and that oh. reminds me, I have a beautiful tray called um, the Salish Sea Sunset Package. And that's for lovers or people who don't want to 
stay, you know, in their bed and breakfast room or they're tired when they come back, but they want to be on the beach or maybe they're still hungry. So I'll make them some special appies and include my house wine. And um, they can sit on the beach. They have a bum. They have a little rug, a bum cushion, wine glasses, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, whatever. Oh, and a little lantern. They've got a lantern, so they can. Unfortunately, I don't have a log. They all floated away. My neighbors have one, but I don't have one. So, if anybody oh, knows how to bring a log to Randall House by the sea that people can sit on, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the news is out. Anyone within hearing distance that can drag a big old log over to Randall House by the Sea in Departure Bay in Nanaimo, uh, it would be ser- seriously appreciated. Uh, so, so you have got things for bed and breakfast, which is usually just sleep the night, have breakfast, go out and do your thing for the day. But you've got things for your visitors during the day too then. Well, actually, no. Um, The checkout times are pretty much the same as everywhere else. But all of the people I've had, and I've had them from, oh, where have they all come from? From England, Switzerland, Winnipeggers that are warming their toes here in the Nanaimo winter. Um, mm-hmm. across the mainland, the United States. I, I, I sound like I've had many, but I only started last year, so those are individual items, the people I'm talking about. But And we, by the way, the most important thing is Departure Bay is the most temperate climate in all of Canada. It's that incredible, is isn't it? And yes, and I think that the, the first people that were here, my understanding is that they used to winter here and then move on. So I feel very blessed to be on on the land of our first nations or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you, what do you have, what do people have to do around, oh, you know, okay. during the day? Yes. Right. Let me get into that. So during the day, all the people, thank you. I, I did write the book of, of uh, what's it called? Of uh, tangents. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's all right. It was a good tangent. Well, I have lots. <laughs> Um, so anyway, um, they they take off for the day and they go about their business doing everything you can imagine. Some of them go all the way to Victoria and back. Um, however, we have two amazing parks here, um, Neck Point Park and um, what are these always from? I always forget the name. Piper's. Of yeah, Piper's Lagoon. I love Piper's Lagoon. And um, you can just walk and walk. It's so beautiful. This is West Coast. There's, there's, well, Euclid is really raw West Coast, but so is Nanaimo. And when the storms come in in November here, it's pretty awesome too. But I give them, my husband actually, after I've made the breakfast, the bed and breakfast people, my husband comes in and tells them where to go, how to get there, how to get to Tofino. And he loves <laughs> traveling. And He's not a so control that's... freak, is he? Tells his people where to go, how to get there. <laughs> He's pretty excited about, he loved to travel so much that when he tells people, and he's been to all these places, because we would bring, we have two beautiful children, and we would bring them over since they were little, age two and six, and we'd go to Coombs, and they'd have those big ice cream cones, and, and we can would fish, we'd fish somewhere. I love trout fishing. If anybody knows where I could go trout fishing, I haven't found that yet. <laughs> yeah. So there's... Um, yeah, yeah, but mostly people, the kind of clientele I want are the ones that are off for the day because I, I need to prepare. I don't make the average breakfast. I like to make, as I call it, um, what do I call it, inspired. Um, I forgot the name of what I call my breakfast. Um, but I like to, that's my favorite part is, is cooking for my bed and breakfast of people. Fine china, different dishes, everything from Mexican beans to whatever, a, a pancake done in a different way. Um, yeah, I can't remember what else I was going to say, but I really enjoy that. Yeah, that's my, that's yes. my I, I do have two suites and only in December we added on what is called a lock off. So I have a lovely, beautiful one bedroom suite and, um, then there's the lock off where, so you open that door and then there's a tiny hall and you open that door and then there's another bedroom, a, bel- a balcony bedroom overlooking Departure Bay. So you can choose either one or two. If the one bedroom is rented, then there's no two bedroom. If the two bedroom is rented, then there's no one bedroom. But the balconies are awesome. I love, my daughter loves to sleep in the bed and breakfast room and have the, 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 the open, what do they call them, doors open and the sound of the waves. And, and yeah, I slept yeah. up. Times too, it's pretty nice. 
You've got yeah. you've got a special name for your breakfast place, don't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That is really interesting because that's what I named. I, I had a tiny little business card made back 20 years ago. Remember when I said about the convention? Yes. And I named it because of my absolute love for Audrey Hepburn. I, and this is a takeoff on Audrey. I named it Breakfast at Tasia's. Instead of Breakfast at Tiffany's. Right. And so you will see a pillow with Tiffany on it, but the younger generation doesn't necessarily know who she is. So, But she's so gorgeous and I, th- I thought, well, you'll enjoy the pillow. And I was able to catch a shaft of sunlight right on her, on that pillow the other day. That was a pleasure. Um, she was an amazing woman. And I hope it is when I get things up to have a donation that goes to her cause. And she was about feeding children. She was, yes. you know, yeah, uh, in those times. And so Breakfast at Tasia's is going to continue to feed Audrey Hepburn's children. Yes, the children yes. children she cared about. And I think I think Rosemary, when when you came over and gave me the idea to put the sign "Breakfast at Tasia's" above the dining room, it was an awesome idea because my girlfriend would say, "Tasia, you can't put Breakfast at Tasia on your business card and on your wine bottle. Everybody's gonna think you're going to running a restaurant." <laughs> it took me a long time to get that, but I did. <laughs> well, and and so now it's a a nice secret between you and your guests. Yes, and the only thing I would tell people that should, or are they wanting to book here is that you really have to read, like BRBO is, is, is one of my vacation rental things, and you really have to read what I wrote because people get a little mixed up between one bedroom, two bedroom, locked off and bed and breakfast, and they see a picture of my wonderful, old-fashioned, amazing kitchen, and they wonder if that's their kitchen. So I would recommend, highly recommend, very carefully looking at the pictures because that's what you get if you have a two bedroom, and this is what you get if you have B&B. Can you tell the listeners, please, about your kitchen and the well, stove and the fridge and how many stoves you have and how many <laughs> ovens you have? And <laughs> tell, I would love, I would love our listeners to know about your fridge and your stove. Well, when we walked into this kitchen, we looked at a very unusual stove and a very unusual fridge. And they're made by Heartland. Um, they've got chrome. And who the heck is Heartland? Heartland? Well, actually, yeah. on one of those trips when my husband and I were with our kids, I think we stopped somewhere, and they were actually selling them here in Nanaimo. And this is years and years and years ago. So when I walked in here, I thought, I remember seeing that with my husband, and he loved it. And I said, yeah, but it just, is, it just isn't enough for me. <laughs> And, yeah. and what it is, it's a, it's a takeoff on the old-fashioned stoves that used to put the wood in uh, underneath. And then the other side was the water carrier. And one woman I had in here, a lady the other day, an older lady, she just loved it. But when I opened it up, oh, maybe that was you. I can't remember. It's not an older lady. I had a different old you Never mind all that. I opened up the top part, and they said... Um, this is where somebody used to put lay the baby in because it was warm. And I can't remember if that was Sylvia's mom or whoever, but it doesn't matter. That was but me. This is, it was you. Okay, <laughs> thank you. She remembers. Rosemary remembers. I got too much to remember. But when you open that up, it's all modernized. It has a, a light in it. It has a fan in it. And the seven burners are electric burners. And the oven, I call it the Hansel and Gretel oven. Because when we first <laughs> I looked at this thing and I thought, what? You know, a bed and breakfast? And I love to cook anyway, so I could use a couple of ovens. And so I have to laugh. My husband rushed off to the hardware store to come back with the smallest baking tray he could find, hoping it would work. And it didn't work. And then he looked at me and says, yeah, you need an oven. <laughs> so if you can't it. even put a cookie sheet in the oven. It's a small oven. <laughs> Great warming oven, but no, but it, it's the old fashioned kind. When you turn it to 400, it's 400 within seconds. My new oh, modern wow. one, I can go for a walk and come back, you know? <laughs> it takes a long time to, to crawl up to 450 degrees. So there's something to be said for the old fashioned things, and they last forever. The fridge is a bit of a. Is a bit of work. I had to move all the bins up to the top rather than down below because I'm not 25 anymore. And, um, <laughs> but, it, but it also, it had no dishwasher. 
because uh, this place was to be a place that was very kind of quaint, but I need a dishwasher if I'm going to have bed and breakfast people. So we pulled out four drawers and put that in. But what I want to mention quickly is upstairs in the suite, that was at one time an entertainment center. And my husband is a visionary and he can see things that not everybody can. And he saw a suite and he saw a kitchenette. He saw, he even cut a hole in the, in the you know, it's like an A-frame. To, to set yep. the fridge in. So he's pretty amazing. And by the way, he cut the garage in half and built a pool table, a pool table room, which is wonderful. So our guests, um, by permission with the, my husband and I, are allowed to use the pool table as well. And the wow. Pool room. Yeah, and Ken likes to play pool. And, and we don't mind. I mean, last year we had so many guests that were friends that we were – they were out on the front with us. We're chatting with them, you know, whatever. We we just, I think it's an awesome job to have. And I, and I didn't know anybody when I came here and I know so many and all that whole summer, you know, you can get kind of lonely because everybody's busy doing their thing. And I had all these guests and they were all friends. Hmm. Yeah. The so bed, and breakfast it, bed and breakfasts are a good way to make new friends. Yes, and the people that have the suites, they're allowed to use entire front yard barbecue. We have an outdoor shower, and we've got a couple of kayaks, so and and six Adirondack chairs, so and umbrellas, and you know, little. My favorite thing is to take two of the little folding chairs and go and sit out in the waves with my feet in the waves and read a book with us with a sun hat. So oh, our guests do that as well. That's spectacular. So, yeah. so it, it, can you go into the water and swim in it? Oh, yeah. So that's the other thing. When we were looking for a house, my husband was looking for a place where I could swim. I swam five, five miles once. and he Oh, knows my goodness. That, yeah, that's a bit of a ways. Well, I got to three miles about 15 years ago, and I thought that was pretty cool. No, not 15 years, 10 years ago. I thought that was pretty cool. And then wow, when I got yes. to water again many years later i thought well if i did three i could do four and once i did four and i said well four is no brag number i'll do five (laughs) (laughs) that's a long way so where did you go from and to uh i was in the pool at um uh in west van rec center it's a good pool okay but here i can walk out the door get into the water and swim to the barrel and back because there's the hut um what's it called Kins Hut, Kins Hut, it used to be Kinsman, you know, the Kinsman Club, it's called Kins yeah. Hut, it's a public beach, and I love, 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 love listening to children laughing off in the distance, because I'm over here, but they're over there playing, and they have a rope and a, a what do you call a platform to sit on, dive off of, and then this big white barrel that encases the, all the boys, and so I swim from here to the barrel and back every day, and then we have an outdoor shower, so I outdoor shower. So because the yeah. water is very salty, right? Yes, but that's the beauty of it. You can not everybody's buoyant, but my husband can. I can float forever. I can fall asleep on top of the water. I'm not kidding. But my husband is not buoyant, so that's why he loves the salt water because he can float. Well, and and yeah, the salt water makes makes it so that you, it's much easier to float. Yeah, and your your hair looks a little better out. You leave it for a few days and just be, become a beach girl. It's a good thing. Oh, geez. so you got the surfer dude thing going on. <laughs> well, I used to have a ton, a ton of curly hair, but, but now I, I like it a little better because I just go for a swim and then I shower down and come in and, and put it up in the air and, you know, off I go oh, to you go. my next breakfast. <laughs> so, so do you have any... Uh, uh, special plans where you're not finished doing something plans you still want to do well i think this afternoon after the show ken and i are going to put together um around like a barrel type uh, table where you can lift up the top and put pillows in and i've always wanted something like that put my couple of the pillows from outdoors and the sunglasses and the and the um, cream so that you don't have to go in and out of the house all the time. So we're going to put that together. That's very short term. But mostly we, we bought a little outer, not outer, oh no, 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 I'm saying the wrong, wrong word. That little boat that floats, I forget, it's got pontoons on it. I always forget the name of it. But nevertheless, it's a little thing with a little tiny motor. And mostly we just want to go around some of the lakes, like Quenelle Lake. That motor is so quiet. That you just uh, you spend the quietest time of your life, and we want to go fishing and 
and um, do the island, really. Like I said, within two years, we're going to hit some bed and breakfast. But last year, we went to Uculet, which is amazing. And I want to go. I booked 10 days there, so that'll be our time off. And my wonderful daughter, Noelani, is coming from Brussels. She's an environmentalist and attended the the Paris uh, COP21 conference. And she's kind of had it with Brussels for a while. So she's coming to visit in May, and we're so looking forward to seeing her. Brussels, she loves Brussels, but she wasn't expecting all those other things to happen, as most of us are. And my wonderful son is also an environmentalist and very much um, – working to bring awareness to mental health problems. So I got two awesome kids. I only have one son, yes. but I always call him my favorite son, and he thinks that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't anticipate leaving Vancouver Island in the near future? Uh, no, but when my husband, my husband also has a, uh, still works at his practice in West Vancouver where he does injectables, and when he gets a few clients, he goes over and I go with him. So... You know, we always enjoy that. We go out for with our son for dinner or friends. Uh, no big trips planned because our goal was to work on the bed and breakfast and the suites and, and Randall House. And it's been a big hit learning curve for me. I've had to change names. Um, but most important for anybody that wants to know, it's, it's, it's Randall House. I love it. Randall House by the Sea, Departure Bay Beach, B&B and Suites, just to let you know kind of where we are. But we're going to travel the island. We're, we're going to stay home for a while. I've been to, I've been everywhere, Cuba, India, and many trips with my husband's business. And I, I can't count them all, but we loved Japan a lot, too. Yes. And so now, after all that world traveling, Vancouver Island is the place for you to be. Oh, it's, what did I say? It's, I feel like I'm coming home. You know, mm. I feel very much home here because it takes in, it takes in so much of who I am, you know, right from spending time on my uncle's farms, playing in the combines, jumping off of bales of hay saying, hobby, hobby, ding, ding, don't forget your wedding ring. <laughs> you know, yeah. so there is country here, which I love, and you can be out in it in no time. And I can't do, couldn't do that in the city. And I, mm-hmm. my husband said to me, Tasia, are you sure you want to spend the rest of your life going to Park Royal? <laughs> you know? And I really got me going to start looking. But he is the one who found the house because he would go online and he said, look at this body of water here. He says, looks like the water goes in and goes out. And then I come and look over his shoulder, and then I go on about my business, and he'd have me come back again. And he says, I want to go and check these places out. So anyway, we had an awesome um, real estate agent, uh, Carol McIntosh, that sold us the house. And but Ken found the house. And what do you say? And we lived happily ever after. We know there's ups and downs. There's this and that. We live with them every day and worry maybe sometimes about our daughter in Brussels and things like that. But we love it here, and we want to leave this for our children. You, what a wonderful thing to leave your children. A beautiful, because your, your bed and breakfast is 4,000 or so square feet, right? <laughs> we downsized from 27,000 to 4,000. That's, yeah, that's not how you do it, Tasia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now you've got, not only have, are you leaving that for your kids, but you're also leaving them a wonderful opportunity to become part of this island. Yes, and my daughter is a terrific cook. Um, she's traveled, I don't know how many countries, lived in 30 probably and traveled 40. And if I ever couldn't do this, she could take over in a flash. It's definitely yeah. a thing. This is, in many ways, this is her dollhouse that she, we lived in Switzerland for a year and I bought her a wooden dollhouse in Switzerland and has all these parts that are in this house. So I think someday, somehow, she'll be take take after me. And maybe I'll live upstairs in the suite and have one of those chairs that go bzzzt up the stairs. Ah. I'm just hoping for a few grandchildren, that's all. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't make that happen, Tasia. They've got to do that by themselves. <laughs> well, yes, of course. I always do that because I call them my imaginary grandchildren. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so you live in a 4,000 square foot amazing home called, and the house itself is, it has a name, which is so cool. The house itself is called Randall House by the Sea in Nanaimo, right on Departure Bay. You, you can't be more than 
I don't know, 20 feet away from the water. Yeah, exactly. I feel very blessed. Sometimes I don't know how I ended up here, but I'm meant to be here. And I think when I walked through the arbor and saw the pink flowers, we abandoned all the other ideas and thought, well, okay, we won't. We won't be flying around all over the world, but we're quite happy here because we have a resort here. My sister was here and she said, I feel like I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, we do. We've got, we've got we've got amazing, this- amazing flowers. So you've got suites and rooms of various sizes. You've got rooms that the balconies look right out 20 feet away from the water, the glistening diamond sparkling water. You can see the eagles go overhead. Yeah. You get orcas coming through periodically. Yeah. All uh, of those the, things. And you can have a, an otter came right up on the, the cement stairs we have, and he he had a piece of fish he was eating. And I managed to get a picture, but then he saw me and took off. But um, yeah, so otters but on your life, doorstep. Yeah, yeah. But life is so alive here. When the summer comes, like winter, we get the rolling sea. Uh, a lot and that sort of thing. But I I was talking to my best friend in LA and sitting on a chair and I pulled the hunter blind down and all I could see was the ocean. I was sitting on a chair talking to her and I said, you know what, Cheryl? I said, even in the winter sitting here, it's in the frothing waves and the gray, it's beautiful. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it is. And no snow. Well, I'm a, I'm a snow lover, so I went to visit my girlfriend in Edmonton last year so I could be in the snow. But for most people, there's no snow. And I had some Winnipeggers come, and they came just to get out of the snow. Yep, yep. And, and the, I mean, as you say, the best climate in all of Canada. So Temperate, most got, temperate. It's, it's amazing. So, listeners, dear listeners, you have been listening to Tasia Kaler, Former stewardess, not flight attendant, back in the days when it was elegant and ever so sophisticated and dressed up in a a, a gay and wonderful atmosphere to go flying in the airplanes, to Mm -hmm. a runway model who then carried on to teach others through her red carpet carpet walk to, to share... The conference, because the body doesn't know the difference between what's real and what we tell it it's real. And if we walk confident, the brain believes we are confident, and so the circle begins. So, Tasia, you've done such wonderful things for people, and now you've opened the doors to your amazing home with its bed and breakfast, with balconies that go out over the water, to a self-enclosed suite, to and and have offered the kayaks and the the chairs and sitting out there with your toes in the water, mm. sipping a mai tai and reading a <laughs> book with a sunshade on, and and having a wonderful time. Tasia, it has been an absolute honor to have you on the show. You are just a vitally alive person, giving back to your community with everything you've got. With and, and now making sure that others have a wonderful opportunity to see this incredible island we live on as well. Oh, you bet. You bet, Rosemary. And probably the greatest gift that someone ever said to me is make sure you appreciate how far you have already come. And every mm-hmm. and when you're, when you're interviewing me here, it makes me feel that, wow, I have come a long way and I, we, we must make sure we, we appreciate ourselves for that. Yes, and thank yes. you for having me as a guest. And anyway, as I said, I love Off the Coast. Great name. Well, thank you. You're my big, I, we're, we're each other's fans. So, folks, you can get a hold of Tasia directly at 250-771-5459. Uh, or, I, have, I have to crack that. My, that's okay? I do have to crack that. The business the phone, phone number is 751 751- <laughs> Seven nine seven nine. Tell us what phone number you want the audience to hear. The one you need to hear is the one I answer all my calls for the business on, and it's a six zero four number six zero four seven seven one five four five nine. Five four five nine six zero four seven seven one five four five nine or Tasia T A A J A. 
Kayler, K-A-Y-L-E-R at gmail.com. Book yourself a space in Randall House by the Sea and settle in for a wonderful vacation. Tasia, thank you for being on the show, and uh, I hope that the people that come to visit you can rest, relax, and watch a real live National Geographic special taking place right in front of their eyes. You're right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye, Tasia. Ladies and gentlemen, so next week on Off the Coast, we are going to be listening to another go-getter woman. We are going to be listening to Angie Barnard. Now, Angie has been called a serial entrepreneur. You have your all manner of serial killers and serial this and serial well Angie is a serial entrepreneur and she is just taking over Vancouver Island her latest venture is the network hub on Vancouver Island which always, which is right in the middle of Nanaimo well, after we visit with Angie we'll be leaving Nanaimo for a little bit but for next week we're going to stick around in Nanaimo for another fascinating look at the incredible people that call this island home. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Rosemary Barnes, the Maverick Voice at Confident Stages, wishing you a wonderful week and enjoy the island life. Thank you for listening to Off the Coast, Views from Vancouver Island with host Rosemary Barnes. To book Rosemary as a speaker or speaking coach or to offer suggestions of extraordinary guests for the show, please visit her website at www.confidentstages.com.